great afternoon and welcome back to my channel look i just wanted to stop in briefly because i'm of course i'm i'm standing here getting myself ready to retire for the night and um as i was standing here i i have this little thing that i do with myself um, each time that i'm seeing myself in the mirror and you know, I'm telling myself that you're loved and you're beautiful and you're wonderful and, you know, you're worthy of, of love and you're worthy of this. And I do that with myself and I've been doing it for a while and it, it has worked <laughs> and it's something that um, I don't mind sharing because if you come from um, some areas of life that I've come from and those are the ones that I'm talking to tonight in particularly that woman. Now, we're not going to rule out a male because it happens to men as well. But I'm talking to that one that has been scarred and wounded and bruised, rejected, ostracized, criticized, pushed aside, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to that individual who was molested, who was raped, who repeatedly allowed people to do things to you because of how you felt on the inside. I'm talking to that woman who is now looking at the fact that you're trying to pick yourself up and do yourself better and start on a new path and you're finding it hard to get there because it's almost like you take one or two steps forward and something tosses you back. It could be one little small thing, but that one little small thing triggers something that happened 15 years ago. And then that triggers something that happened when you were seven. And then that triggers something that happened when you were in third grade and what the teacher did to you and how the teacher embarrassed you in front of everyone. And then that goes back to, uh, the relationships you had with other people and you always seemed to be the outsider and you always was felt rejected and you didn't quite feel like you fit in, like you fit into that group. And I'm talking to you because I'm standing here and I'm telling myself all of these wonderful things and all these wonderful accolades that I give to myself. Not putting myself on a pedestal, but I'm encouraging myself. I do believe in encouraging myself because if you're waiting for somebody else to do it, baby, let me tell you, if they like you today, they may give you some encouragement. But tomorrow, it's going to be hard to find. Yesterday, you experienced that. But I'm here to tell you that what they're saying about you and how they treated you and what they've done to you and the fact of the matter that they made you feel as if you didn't matter, I call it the invisible girl syndrome. That's what I used to call it for myself the invisible girl syndrome. You know, that invisible person that nobody seemed to hear, that invisible person that nobody seemed to even care to hear, that invisible person that never was really important to anyone, that invisible person that could hurt and nobody really cared. I can even go back into the recesses of my mind and those of us that have had... Um, Someone fondle you at a young age when you didn't know what was going on or molestation or rape or, or abuse. You know, it could have been the physical abuse. It could have been mental, emotional abuse that you took. And with that being said, 
I think about all the times that I allowed that to define me. I allowed what happened to me because I felt like I wasn't being hurt. Someone even told me years later, I was a grown adult and I was expressing the fact through anger because I had not yet learned how to handle those things when they would reoccur in my mind, you know, when they come back to surface, those things that you push down and suppressed and you thought you had it all covered and somehow or another begin to rise up. And at that moment when I was expressing to someone and I didn't really know how to handle it at that time, they looked me in my face and the words they said to me cut me inside out. They simply said, Oh, you ought to be over that by now. I then had to deal with the fact that not only was I not heard then, I didn't get help then. I grew up carrying that baggage with me and undoubtedly many people paid for my hurt because I lashed out and I did things that was out of character and I made sure I tried to stab them before they stabbed me. And if it felt like rejection was somewhere close, I made sure that I disappeared so that the rejection didn't have to actually take place Therefore, it wouldn't have the impact that it would if I hung around and it happened. I know you're understanding me. I know you're hearing me. I know you're feeling me. I felt that at this moment, not thinking about anything, but encouraging myself the way I always do. I feel good when I do that. But all of a sudden, it came to my mind. And I could feel someone hurting over those things that we find hard to express, the pain, the hurt. And we dare not try to tell some of our family members about it. Sometimes they're the worst people to tell. They're the worst ones to tell. Instead of them saying, you know what, let's go get you counseling. Let's go get you help. I'll go with you. I'll walk with you hand in hand. They're often behind your back and everybody's talking and everybody's got something to say because you may have act out again. All I'm saying is, and I'm not going to go by way of scripture, but I would be remiss if I did not tell you. Stop it. You are enough. Are you enough for everybody else around you on your job, at the store, your neighbors, your, your family members? You may not be, but you are perfect for God. You are enough for God. He loves you. He wants you. He needs you. He has something for you to do. He's got all of these blessings in his hands waiting on you, but you're allowing that hurt, that pain and everything that has happened to you to keep you from moving forward. I'm here to tell you, my friend, the moment that you realize that it's not about everyone else. It's not about what they said. It's not about what they're saying. It's not about how they look at me. It's not about if they include me in their little posse or not. When you get to realize that you are more than enough and that they're missing out on a good thing. Look, I'm going to tell you as simply as I can. Find a way to get in a still, nice, quiet place. Safe, quiet, still, peaceful. And begin to allow your hurt to flow in prayer. 
tell God all about it. Give it to him. Let him know I'm here, God. I need help. Now, I do want to say this as my disclaimer. Counseling is always in order. But you have to find the person that works for you. The person you feel safe with. Someone that is degreed and accredited. Has the credentials behind them for this type of thing. I know the pain. I know the hurt. I feel it. I see it. I know it's there. But I also know a God who can fix anything. He knows everything about you. Every hair on your head is numbered. God said that he has engraved our names in the palm of his hand. What parent does that? God. So I'm telling you, find a way to get to him. He's waiting on you. You're not going to run up on God and his back is to you. Honey, I'm telling you, you will not do that. He's waiting on you with open arms. And he wants to tell you, I've been waiting on you, dear friend. I've been waiting on you. I've been waiting on you. Find a way to get to God. Find that place of safety. Find that counseling. Get yourself the help that you need. And as I stood here this evening, I knew that I needed to say this. I knew that this needed to come from my mouth. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not hurting anymore. I'm not looking for a validation from anybody. I'm not looking for you to say yes. You're on it. No, you're not. You you can't hurt my feelings like that anymore. But this took time to get to this point. It took me time. It took me tears. It took me struggles. Some days I had stomach pains from it. But I know a God that rocked with me every inch of the way. And when I say he rocked with me on days when I had to step back, I was like, God, I don't know. It was God that was saying, I got you. I got you. I got you. That's the importance of having a prayer life. Establishing a prayer life where you can go to God for yourself. You don't necessarily need the preacher to go to God for you. Not, no, you don't need your mother. You don't need your grandmother. You don't need a best friend. You can go to God for yourself. Go to God for yourself. Nobody knows your hurt and pain the way you do. Nobody can express that to God like you can. Ah, I know. It's a pretty long video, but I wanted to tell someone. Mustered up the strength to hand it over to God. I'm telling you, if you got to put it in a box, throw it all in there, all the hurt, all the pain, everything you can think of and tell God, I'm bringing this. If you got to write it on a piece of paper, And when you get down on your knees, you read it off to God. I'm coming to you for this, God. And I'm coming to you for that. There's nothing wrong with that. God will take that. He'll take that. And he'll do great things with it. I tell you, he'll do great things with it. Nobody can mend a broken heart like God. After all, every muscle, every vein, every blood cell, every bone, God put in your body. Who knows you better than God? The true and living God. Go to him, my friend. Go to him. Find that way to get with God. You don't have to tell anybody else what you're going to him for. As a matter of fact, sometimes it's better not to say anything. If all you can do is cry, find that quiet place. Get on your knees, get your tissues, honey, and cry. God understands your tears. I'm telling you, I done done too many of those too. I've done a lot of those tears and God understood every one of them. How do I know he understood them? Because when I got up off my knees, I could feel 
years and years of stuff falling. It may not have fallen all at once, but I could feel them just coming off of me, coming off, of, coming out of my hair, coming off my shoulders, coming off my legs. I could just feel that hurt and that pain being healed. And when I say it didn't happen all at once, it wasn't because God was slack on his job. I had to accept the fact that I was worthy. <laughs> That's what it is. I had to accept the fact that I was worthy of God loving me the way he was loving me. And I cherish that. And I wouldn't be the best person I could be if I didn't tell somebody else. So I'm here to tell you, my friend, bag it up, honey. Like you bag up that garbage in your kitchen. Bag it up. Get it ready. Tie it up. Get down on your knees and tell God, here it is, God. I'm tired of carrying this around. I'm done. I'm done with it. You take it. You mend the hurt. You dry my tears. You protect me from those fears of mine. You accept me, God, so I don't have to worry about everybody else accepting me. You won't reject me, God, so I don't have to worry about others' rejection anymore. And then ask God to let you forgive all that have hurt you. Honey, when you forgive, it's not so much for the other person it's for you. I had to learn that the hard way. I wanted to hang on to everything that I had. I wanted to hang on to it. But when I learned to forgive, <laughs> that's when I really, really, really started to heal. Look, if you don't remember anything else that I've said tonight, Remember that God loves you with an unconditional love. And if you can find a way in your heart to believe that I love you too, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. And I will go in prayer with you. I don't have to know who you are. God knows who you are. I don't have to know your name. God knows your name. God also knows your voice. Put that voice out there for him. Call on his name. I tell you, my friend, he will not neglect you. He'll come by and see about you. He'll do better than that. He'll come by and see about you. Sit down, take a seat, and sit there and rock with you while you're rocking, honey. If you need a Kleenex, he'll hand you one of those. Here, sweetie. Dry your face. I'm here for you. That's the kind of God he is. You got to do your part. Do your part. Do your part. Do your part. Don't trust me. Trust him. I'm saying it, but don't trust me. Trust God. Trust him. Try him. Let him prove who he is. Let him prove how he works. Let him prove what he can do. God bless you and until the next time.